Hey, I want to make a video about the condition of the market at the moment. You may realize a lot of your positions are going down into the red recently. Uh, some positions might be going up, but due to inflation, due to war, there's a lot of uncertainty. A lot of people are scrambling, trying to put their money into what, what they perce perceive to be safe stocks. Uh, oil's been trading pretty high recently. Times like this, people put money in gold and silver or bonds. But whenever you have such volatility, there tends to be a lot of repositioning. Um, people leaving certain sectors, going for more safe plays. And anytime you have a large turnover in the market like that, a lot of companies can get left behind and their financials not not examined so um, you can kind of peer through the, the data and you can find really good opportunities out there like you've ever looked at a company that you really wanted to buy into and you're looking at the five year the five year history of the stock price and you're thinking man I wish I could have got in in 2013 if I would have put all my money into it in 2013 imagine where it'd be today well, whenever these companies get overlooked, sometimes they, they do drop to multi-year lows. And I've made a video in the past using macro trends to help you sort through that data and save you time when you're trying to find companies that are beaten down. So I'm just going to briefly go over the settings that I use. The P-E ratio, I want to make sure the company is profitable at least, so I put a minimum of 0.1 and 15 is usually the magic number when it comes to the P.E. ratio so I'll go ahead and put 25 here so I can look a little bit beyond the scope and then I go over to the fundamental page I want the operating and net margin to at least be zero meaning that the company is making money every quarter the forward P.E. is the most important uh, this is for the next 12 months how is the company going to look so you want it Put a minimum of one because you want it to at least be profitable. Maximum of 25. You can sort this lower to 15 or so if you want. Uh, PS ratio, the lower the better. Go ahead and put a cap at um, whatever you feel comfortable. I feel comfortable at three. And then I have it sorted by PE ratio over here. You can see some companies with PE ratio down to one. Some of these are. Uh, recognizable companies too and if you remember whenever I did this video maybe five or six months ago it was really hard to find companies below a 15 PE ratio uh, it was mostly companies in China or South America that had I mean when you go to examine them they don't always adhere to the gap reporting which is the general accounting, uh, forget what the rest of it stands for, but it's the standard that we use here in the U.S. Stock Exchange to kind of normalize the accounting practices and make sure that numbers are consistent. So you can see stuff here like U.S. Steel, Smith & Wesson Brands, um, LG Display, Steel Dynamics. Some of these are recognizable companies. Um, Nucor, a lot of steel companies, Rocket, Foot Locker, so, oh I see cons on there as well, with the P ratio of 5. So you can come through here, find a couple companies that you really like and then you can do a deeper dive there's Dell on here with the PE of 6 and what I've been doing recently what I like to do so we'll take Dell ticker symbol Dell go to Yahoo Finance type in Dell and then go over to the statistics tab and you can look at going back uh, about a year you can look at the trailing PE, so the past 12 months, how the company's done, and then the forward PE, which is how the company is expected to do for the next 12 months. 
and that Ford PE can tell you whether or not the company is is going to be overvalued or undervalued into the future. So if as you can see the market cap was fifty four billion dollars, almost fifty five billion dollars as of January, end of January in twenty twenty two. And the PE ratio at the time was twenty three with the Ford PE of ten point five. And you can see the next reporting cycle, the next quarter, um, the price the value of the company increased almost twenty percent. And as you can see, the PE ratio went up slightly, but the, and the the Ford PE went up slightly. But this was still telling investors that the company is undervalued. So jump a few quarters, you can see that it went up another $10 billion in value. And the trailing PE was still around 22, forward of 11, telling you that the company was undervalued. And then, of course, everything sold off, sold off. Things are down 50% or so. But look at this trailing PE of 7 with the forward of 8. It's extremely low values. And again, 15 is a sweet spot. And the price to sales is well below 1. So this tells you that Dell is significantly under, undervalued. And I can't tell you how much the company would increase in value. No one can, you know, in the future. But almost assuredly, whenever things stable, you know, stabilize and balance out, this stock will um, will increase in value. At least double back to where it was based on the PE ratio alone and the price to sales ratio. And that's just assuming that their financials hold steady. And there's tons of companies that you can find like this where they are obviously undervalued. And I mean, don't just put your money in a company just because. Find one that you really like, an industry that you really like. Um, there's all sorts of companies here. Dick Sporting Goods, Macy's, Avis Budget, Honda. Um, Intel. Western Union. Toyota, Harley-Davidson, Best Buy, Allstate, HP, Crocs, Albertsons, Tyson Foods, Verizon. And don't just buy companies based on what you see here. Still do a deep dive into the financials and see how they're looking. But this is a very good way, a very good time right now. Anytime there's a large turnover in the market, to come here and find what is getting overlooked, where the opportunities are. If you don't, if you don't pay attention to the financials, you might see that a company has gone down 60% due to the turmoil lately, but they could still be overvalued. So whenever money starts to come back into the market, there's least likely chance that an overvalued company is going to be bought up, you know, uh, contradictory to their financials. But if a company is extremely low uh, eventually and it may take a year it may take longer you never know how long it'll take but eventually hedge funds money managers banks will do their research and they'll come across these companies and start to buy them up and whenever they do latch on that the price of the stock can drastically increase in a short amount of time and another thing that I've been liking to do lately is I'll come here to the market cap and I'll put like a one billion dollar market cap for example and this will show you um, very small companies you can go down to a hundred million if you wanted this will show you smaller and smaller companies and you can find ones that have a low PE ratio do a deep dive into them and find find really good companies that aren't worth a whole lot of money yet. So whenever the banks, money managers, and hedge funds do come across these companies and they start to put lots of money into them, since there's such a low market cap, it only takes a, a little bit of money, uh, you know, relatively little bit of money 
for the stock price to double, triple, quadruple. That's not always the case, and it, again, it always depends on the fundamentals of the company and the future outlook on the company, if they're disruptive or anything like that. But that will increase your chances to make good picks. And um, still do your research, still look at the, uh, the presentations and the Q4s and make sure that you are going with a good company. But that about wraps it up.